Hello, welcome to the very first example for nuclear physics. Uh, in this example, we are going to look at how a detector detects a radiation from a radioactive source and how this detector reading will change according to the thickness of this lead sheet. All right, so if you're ready, let's go. Uh, part A, explain what is meant by gamma radiation. All right, so gamma radiation is electromagnetic radiation, right? So this one is when, I mean, if you want to flex a bit, you could say this is when the photons of uh, electromagnetic radiation, two marks, so we shall write a bit more. When are they emitted? Okay, emitted from unstable nuclei decaying to be more stable you know let all the negative the no let all the gamma energy go out to descend into a more stable energy level part b a source of gamma radiation is placed a fixed distance away from the detector as shown in figure 13.1 all right so there's a detector here and we're going to detect the radioactive source. So you see, oh, there's a lead, lead sheet here. And this lead sheet is the one that is blocking some of the gamma radiation. Okay. So the lead sheet of thickness X is placed between the source and the detector. Right. And what is happening now is um, the average count rate C corrected for background is recorded. So I guess I should explain to you a bit what is corrected for background. When we say corrected for background, around you already got radioactive particle, a little bit background radiation. So there is always background radiation because around you, there are so many different isotopes and some of them are radioactive. So any form of background radiation randomly happening around you is possible bananas are quite radioactive so if you eat like i guess a few hundred bananas a day you may get a small dose of radiation poisoning but there's always some background radiation sometimes even from outer space so when we say corrector for background means uh, we take note of the background radiation and then we remove it all right so what is count rate count rate here you count the decay. So this is number of decay. So number of decayed, already decay, nuclei per unit time. Because they say count rate. Nah. So it's per unit time. Nah. Okay. So basically, I have a detector here. This is normally a Geiger-Muller counter, GM counter. You can check out the activity video if you want to know more about how a GM counter works or you could Google, okay? So the GM counter picks up the decay nucleus and it picks it up by creating a crackle or a static and we can measure this to the counter. So the counter, basically what it does is it is able to count the number of, uh, the average number of nucleus that decay in a given unit type. All right, so anyway, the variation of thickness X of ln C is shown in figure 13.2, which is a graph. All right, this is my graph. Okay, and immediately I can see that there are plot points. Of course, when you are drawing your paper 5 or paper 3, you are not supposed to use blobs. Lah. Okay, so don't be like them. Use cross, not, cannot even tell. So there's one point here, two points, three, four, Five, six. What a good experimental. Oh, my head's blocking six. What a good experimental data reading. All right. So the absorption of gamma radiation in lead might be may be represented by this equation. Very familiar. E negative mu x. Mu is your linear attenuation coefficient. Remember this? You have seen this before in x-rays. Wow, radioactive also can block, can, because radioactive particles can be absorbed by different, different material, depending on what particle you're talking about, all right? So use the graph to determine the value of your mu 
for gamma radiation of that. All right. So first things first, um, obviously this graph is not supposed to be a straight line, but I don't know about you, but this graph looks pretty straight to me. So let me check the axis first. Oh, no wonder. This one is lawn. This one is X. So what do I do? I should uh, rearrange the equation such that lawn C becomes the title or the subject of my equation. So I'm going to start with C is equal to C naught E negative mu X. All right. And uh, I will, I guess, lawn both sides. Lawn C is equal to lawn big bracket C naught E negative mu X. So I have lawn A, which is C naught times ln b, which is e negative mu x. And I will split them to ln a plus ln b. So this will be ln e negative mu x plus ln c naught. This is ln c. Okay, so time to do a bit of housekeeping. Ln c here, and then this one, you can bring negative mu x down as an index. Then this will be ln e plus ln c naught. Skip as many steps as you think you need. Use as many steps as you think you need. Okay? So this ln e is actually 1, right? This entire thing is 1. So what I will have here now is negative mu x plus ln c naught. So what is our graph? Our graph is ln c against x. Nah, here is ln c, here is x. Okay, so we compare with the general equation of a straight line. y is equal to mx plus c. We are looking for mu, but if I check out the axis, this is our, oops, very thick. This is our y-axis. Ln c is our y-axis. x is our x-axis. So hence, I can say gradient of the graph is equal to negative mu. So I guess I got to find the gradient of this graph. One, two, three, four, five, six. You pause the video, you draw the best fit line, I draw the best fit line, and I'll see you in the next shot. Okay, so this is my best fit line, or the best I can draw. And I have uh, plotted out the coordinates here. Uh, where it cuts the y-axis and also at this point uh, when x is 16. Okay, so these are the coordinates, uh, which I will now substitute into my equation to find gradient. All right, so I have 0, 3.9. So negative 0, 3.9. So this will be... I guess I could just put like that. 0, 3.9, minus 2.9, and this one will be minus 16. Okay, you don't have to worry about unit conversion here, this mm. This one's second negative one because of count to it. So in case you are always a bit lost with the units for lawn, let me give you a pro tip here. Whenever the unit is inside the bracket, it is stuck together with the bracket. So lawn itself has no unit one. But this one here means S negative one is the unit for C. So remember what count rate was? Number of decay per unit time. So the per unit time necessitates the S negative one. All right. So where were we? Oh, well, we were looking for the gradient. Okay, so I substitute inside D0, 3.9, 16, 2.9. All right. Y2 minus Y1, X2 minus, hang on, my, this one is wrong. Hang on. I should have put 3.9. Okay, hang on. It's hard on one note because I can't stay at the graph. Okay, so anyway, it will be 3.9. 0 and 2.916. Okay, negative mu. This is 
mm negative 1, the unit is mm negative 1, so you don't have to convert anything. You just need to press your good friend calculator. So I will have 1 divided by 16, my friends. So this would be negative 0 0.0625 is equal to negative mu. So your mu, your linear coefficient is 0 0.0625 mm negative 1. Okay, so your final answer can be 0 0.063. You can write 2SF, you can write 3SF. I'll just stick to 3SF. Lah. Okay, so where are the four marks here? Okay, I'm going to show you the mark scheme now. Okay, here is the mark scheme. So if you draw your best fit line, so if we check this line and it looks good, we'll give you one mark. Okay, and using the equation, this is one mark, using the equation, either you derive, you arrive at this equation here, one mark, or recognizing this is the gradient of best fit. This is a little bit of a not so new question, so it will be best to show both. Don't just suddenly out of nowhere, gradient equal negative mu. Why? Try to do this. This skill is very important for paper 5 anyway, so this is good practice. Okay, and finally, your mu is within the range. So the answer in the masking is 0 0.061, but there are two ways or two marking criterions. Okay, so if let's say it is 0 0.061 is the answer, this is 0 0.061. So if it's within plus minus 0 0.02, means if it's between 0 0.063 to 0 0.059, all these values in between here with the appropriate SF will give us two marks. Okay, but if it's plus minus 0 0.04, that means we want to extend this to 0 0.065 to, I guess this one would be 0 0.057. So any answer within this range from here to here, larger range or will get you one mark. Okay. So as long as your best fit line is correct, like mine, see, and I draw it on one note, okay, I'll be able to get two marks. Lah. So here, look, this one is two marks. All right. So this is the part where you are asked to use the graph part B. Okay. So just make sure you draw the line of best fit and the rest is just a bit like paper five. We're now going to move to part C. Let's check out the question. Okay, part C. The value of mu, your linear absorption coefficient in B for gamma radiation in lead. State and explain or suggest and explain whether the value of mu for aluminium would be the same, greater or smaller than the mu in lead. Hmm. Well, what do you think? Do you think aluminium will absorb radiation better than lead based on your understanding from AS? No, right? Lead is very good. Aluminium is quite radioactive, quite reactive, so it doesn't absorb that well. So I would say that the aluminium, aluminium is less absorbing or absorbs gamma less than lead. And because of this, if it absorbs less, this means, oh, look, think about your graph. Your graph was ln C against X. So it's a straight line that drop. If I don't absorb that much, that means I will drop slower. Okay, so if I don't absorb that much, the drop will be slower. So the gradient is less. So this is aluminium and this is lead. Okay, so I'm going to say since or hence, the decrease is less, okay? So this reflects to the gradient. The gradient of the graph given is less. Doesn't go down that quickly. Aluminium will go down slower than lead because it does not absorb well. So if it doesn't absorb well, it means that more particle can pass through. Meaning, even though you make it thick, you increase X, the aluminium will drop slower because the aluminium doesn't like to absorb nucleus. 
So a lot will pass through. The count rate will be big. Aluminium is not as good. So a lot will pass through this uh, lead sheet. A lot will pass through this one. When it's aluminium, when you replace with aluminium, a lot will pass through. So when this is aluminium and a lot passes through, the count rate actually increase. So for the same thickness, dot, 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 aluminium will have a higher count rate than lead. Okay, so this is why the gradient is less. Or oh, if you understand the idea of coefficient, especially for exponents, it's pretty obvious. So then you can say, hence, mu for aluminium is smaller than that. All right? Doesn't absorb that much, count rate will decrease slower. Doesn't absorb that much, a lot will pass through, count rate still high. Okay, so that's it for this question. Hopefully you've learned something today. Uh, if you find this helpful, you know what to do. Share it with a friend so that they can learn A2 together with you. Let's do well in the exams together. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.